You imagined yourself having a marvelous business. And then comes the day a building is for sale, and you haven't a nickel toward. And a total, not a total stranger, but a man comes in and asks you quite in a friendly manner, are you going to buy it? And knowing you don't have a penny, you say to him, as you would a friend to a friend, with what? And then he says, well, I have money. It's only in the bank put, drawing nothing. You say, well, I have no collateral. But he said, I watch you. You're an honest person. Your family, they're honest. I think they are. Would you like me to buy it for you? Get my lawyer to bid for it. If they knew that I'm bidding, that I have money, they'll bid me up. And so I get it at the very lowest price by getting a lawyer who represents more than one client, and they do not know who he represents, and he'll bid for it. Are you willing to take it regardless of the price? And you say, yes, I'll take it. But I have no collateral. All I need is your signature, that you will simply pay 6% on whatever the price is, and then reduce that principal over a period of 10 years. Agreed? Yes. But then sign this, and we'll see if we can buy it. That day, you owned the building. And you didn't have one nickel when you owned the building that day. You only had your signature on a piece of paper. At the end of 10 years, you repaid the man his principal. You reduce it every year, paying him 6% on the remaining principal, and reduce the entire thing at the end of 10 years. That man dies 20 years later and leaves you 150000 in cash, tax-free, and a couple of homes and many personal belongings. In the meanwhile, you continue in that business and it multiplies and multiplies. And that year was 1922, 1924. This is now 1968. That building, I'm speaking factually, that building in 1924 is now gone. He paid only $50,000 for it. It was repaid and repaid. A bank, three years ago, bought the property, because the building was rotted, bought the property for $840,000 in cash and no capital gain. From $50,000 to $840,000. In the meanwhile, the business has expanded into all the other islands, so that today you couldn't buy them out for $15 million. All in imagination. And this goes back to the imagination that preceded this man's offer to buy the building. For the young man, seeing this building and entertaining a thought that the present owners deceived his father and through deception got him out of a partnership, a junior partnership, and he was moved, not to get even, but to prove that he really had something within him and could be a success in spite of their deception. And so, every day he would see on that marquee, not their name, but his own family's name. And he would see it in his mind's eye because you could not take their name and transliterate it and make it spell this man's family's name. But he saw it, and in his mind's eye he saw that name which, if true, would imply the family owned it. He did it every day, twice a day, for two years. And then came this sudden, out of the nowhere. And the whole thing was made possible, and today they're all over the islands. And they have no partners. They've never taken in one partner, never sold one bit of stock outside of a family ownership. All by imagination. Now, I know what I'm talking about because I am a member of that family. I'm speaking of my own family. This is not hearsay. I know it. My second brother, Victor, was the one in whose imagination this whole thing began to bloom. And he still works all by imagination. He knows what he wants, and then after having decided in himself, that's what I want, and that's good for the business, he then, in his mind's eye, he appropriates it. And then let things happen, as told us in Scripture. The vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens, it will flower. If it be long, then wait, for it is sure, and it will not be late. 